Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I made this metal framed wall mirror. So before we get started, I want to let you know this is my first time welding. So this is definitely not a welding tutorial. Instead, just more of a how-to on the process of how I built this frame. My buddy Kevin works in a metal fabrication shop, so he was so nice to bring me up to his shop, show me the tools, show me how things work, and help me get started with this metal project. So you're going to see some tools that I normally don't have access to. All right, let's start the project. We started this project by cutting quarter inch flat bar steel to length with Kevin's metal bandsaw and chop saw. The width of the metal is 4 inches. However, you could easily make these cuts with an angle grinder, which makes surprisingly straight cuts. I'll have all of the dimensions and a cut list for this project in my written article linked below. To prepare for welding, I ground some bevels into the outside joint edges of the metal with an angle grinder. These bevels create room to get good penetration and make for a strong weld. We then cleaned up the cut pieces with some acetone, and then we clamped the frame together with some right angle clamps to make sure our cuts were correct and everything was square. Kevin then put in some tack welds to hold all the pieces in place. And then, after some quick tutorials, he let me loose to weld it all together. And holy moly, I am hooked. Give me some more welding projects. Now I'm obviously a beginner and my welds weren't pretty, but they also weren't terrible either. They held and they were strong, which is what is most important. The next step is to grind down the welds, and here you can see Kevin getting after it with an angle grinder and a grinding disc. The last bit of metal working for this project was to make some tabs that will hold in the mirror. For this, we marked off two inch squares and drilled a hole in the center of them with a drill press. Kevin then cut out the tabs with this amazing cutting tool called an iron worker. This thing was crazy, but again, these cuts can easily be made with an angle grinder. The mirror will be hung by a French cleat, so we used a cutting of the cleat wood as a spacer so we knew how far in to place the tabs. And then Kevin welded all four of the tabs securely in place in each of the four corners. Back in my shop, I broke down some half inch plywood on my table saw. This will attach to the back of the mirror and what attaches the mirror to the frame. And again, I'll have an article on my website with all of the dimensions and cuts if you'd like to make this yourself. I cut the plywood about a quarter inch wider than my mirror. That way, when I attach the plywood to the back of the mirror, the mirror will set just slightly away from the metal frame. Because this produces a slight reveal of the plywood backer, we spray painted the outer edges black so it doesn't show. I then set the plywood backer in the frame against the tabs and turned it upside down. I put some scrap blocks on my table to hold the plywood up against the tabs while I attached it to the frame. And then I pre-drilled and screwed the plywood to all four tabs. The screws I had on hand were a little longer than necessary and poked through to the front. So to fix this, I cut them off with my Dremel, nice and flush. The space that we left behind the tabs worked perfectly and fit the cleat wood just right. On my miter saw, I cut two pieces of the wood to 24 inch strips. And then I moved to my table saw and ripped both pieces to have a 45 degree angle on one side. If you aren't already familiar with this mounting system, one side is attached to the wall and the other attached to the piece to be hung, held together by gravity. I'll leave a link below to a good French cleat tutorial if you'd like to learn more. And this is how the two pieces will fit together to mount. On one of the strips, I pre-drilled five holes for my screws. I then used a countersink bit so the screw heads would sit flush. I used a wooden spacer to evenly set the cleat slightly away from the top of the metal frame and then I screwed it securely in place. These screws also penetrated the wood, so I popped back out my Dremel and cut off the tips of these as well. And with that, the back side was done. I thoroughly cleaned off my metal one more time with acetone and then I applied a thick coat of paste wax, which I let set for 15 minutes before buffing out the excess. This is a great sealer that doesn't leave the metal oily and protects it from rust. My buddy recommended I attach the mirror to the plywood with this contact cement by Weldwood. To apply it, I put two coats on the plywood, letting it dry in between coats. I applied two because the ply is porous. I also applied one coat to the back of the mirror. 
And once both of the surfaces were dried to a tacky feel, I put the two together for an instant bond. And finally, on to hanging this mama up. I measured and found the center of the vanity the mirror is going to hang above. And then I mapped out where I wanted it to hang with painter's tape. Within the taped outlines, I took my stud finder and found the studs for the wall side of the French cleat. I then measured where I wanted the cleat to hang and then pre-drilled for the screws. I unfortunately had only one stud available where I wanted to hang, so to make up for this, I got these heavy duty wall anchors. Here, you see me pre-drilling for the anchors and then attaching and securing the cleat to the wall. I used three inch screws to attach the cleat to the stud. Right on. And with the cleat in place, it was time to hang. Go this way. that metal bug. I'd love to know what you guys think too. Questions, comments, leave those below. Follow me on Instagram and I will see you next time on the next project. Thanks guys. So you're going to see some things that I normally don't have access to. Tool. Tool?